I'm Opti GPU, and this is the best $100 low profile graphics card you can buy right now. And we're going to put it in an Optiplex 7010 that only costs $65, making this an under $200 budget build. 6 gigabytes DDR6 memory with an interface of 96 bits, base clock of 2000 megahertz, boost clock up to 2450, a max TDP of 45 watts, and 128 XMX engines. My camera woman did a really good job of getting all her wiggles out before she hit, <laughs> before she hit record so she doesn't bump the table. <laughs> this is the Optiplex 7010 that I got off eBay. I haven't done anything to it yet. Inside, we've got an i7 3770 CPU. We have a 240 watt power supply. It came with eight gigabytes of RAM installed. Of course, I'm gonna double that, but it did not come with a hard drive. That's okay because I had an SSD lying around. This is a 256 gigabyte Kingston pre-installed with Windows 10, so it's ready to go. We're gonna be plugging the card into this 16X slot. We've got an 8X slot over here as well that we're gonna be using for absolutely nothing. The card is going to be kind of lapping over onto it. It's going to be kind of hanging out under the fans. It's a little too close to this power supply to use, even if we wanted to, which we don't. Now it's time to pop in the SSD. So I'm going to show you all how to do that. Cool thing about Dell is anything marked in blue, if it's blue, it moves. So first we need to take out the optical drive. I've got a couple of plugs to remove here and then pull up on the blue and make it move. We've got the hard drive bay locked right there. We've unlocked it. We're gonna take the caddy out and put the SSD in the caddy the right direction. And this just bends around. There's little tabs that go into the sides here. Back in place, lock it back down, and put the optical drive back in place. There we go. Now to unbox the graphics card. Got an important notice here and instructions. We're going to file those away in a special place. And here is the card. Something amazing about this card that <clears throat> I have yet to see in any other is it is pre-installed with the low profile bracket. Also, you should observe precautions. Here's the card. We've got two fans over a basic heat sink and the ports. We've got an HDMI port and a display port. Oops, I forgot to plug in the SSD. So let's unplug this again. And take out the optical drive. The reason I want to swing this hard drive uh, caddy up is because my fingers are just too fat. There we go. And we got one more. There we go. Now we should be able to swing it back down into place and put the optical drive back in. One and two. Now all we have to do is install the card. We're going to plug it directly down into the 16X slot. Now as I push it down, you should be able to hear a satisfying click. As soon as the card automatically downloaded its driver, the screen flickered off. Usually it turns right back on. This time, not so much. I got the black screen of death. My first attempt to fix it was to remove the card and reboot the computer using a super old VGA cord, since that's the best the computer can do without a graphics card. I tried downloading the new driver, but it didn't like the fact the card was not actually in the computer, so it wouldn't let me download. Gotta love it when a safeguard meant to keep you from messing up your computer instead just keeps you from fixing it. Next thing I tried was putting the card back in the computer, but leaving the old VGA cord connected to the computer instead of the HDMI cord directly in the graphics card. 
Apparently I didn't like that either. Ominous text appeared on the black screen letting me know a graphics card is in the computer and I have no choice but to connect through the graphics card. There's one last thing I can try. I took the graphics card out of the computer yet again, booting up in safe mode so I can use a special piece of software called Display Driver Uninstaller that allows me to manually remove graphics drivers. I allowed the program to detect all the graphics drivers on my computer and manually uninstalled the Intel Arc graphics driver. The computer restarted to complete the process. Now I have a driver-free computer and I'm ready to start over. After it fully restarted, I shut the computer down so I can put the graphics card back in. This time, to prevent the driver from automatically installing, I removed my USB Wi-Fi adapter so that it could not connect to the internet. I knew that I had a newer version of the driver already downloaded, a newer version I hoped had fixed the problem. At some point during the installation, the screen flickered off again, but this time it came back on. The installation had worked. The computer restarted to finish everything up, and now I'm finally ready to do my testing. I'm going to open up Furmark, and we're going to stress this thing out a bit. And I'll hit Run. Now we're displaying on the screen a donut made out of cat fur. Question for my followers. If you had a donut made out of cat fur, what, would, what flavor? It's pulling about 45 watts maximum. Uh, not pulling any more than that, even though we can get a little bit more power out of that PCIe slot. So this thing really isn't too power hungry. Now we're going to run TimeSpy. Our benchmark score on TimeSpy is 3675. I ran this test on a 1080p monitor. And again, we have an Intel Core i7-3770 in this computer. Uh, you can see the detailed monitoring down below. Now we're going to run Firestrike. And our benchmark score for Firestrike is 6871. And you can see the detailed monitoring right here. And last but not least, we have Night Raid. And our benchmark score for Night Raid is 21828. And you can see detailed monitoring right here. 